الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I first want to say inshallah ta'ala I thank the masjid and the organization who have allowed me to come and speak in this masjid and deliver my lecture. I personally say this with sincere, sincerity and honesty. There is not a masjid up the whole country of the United Kingdom more beloved to me than this masjid. I, li I love this masjid more than any masjid there ever is. Of course, I mean the UK. And the reason why I say that is because this is the masjid I grew up in. These teachers that are in this masjid are my teachers who taught me. I learned here, I studied here. I am very, very humbled to be speaking in the presence of my teachers. Our Shaykh, Shaykh Ahmed Tahir always sits on this chair. He teaches lessons from here. It's very humbling for me to come and to sit on his seat and to teach. But I thank them all, Jazahumullahu Khairan, for allowing me to deliver my lectures and I'm very nervous. I'm normally not like that when I give it in my local masjid. I also am happy to see the brothers who I haven't seen for a very long time. Some brothers I haven't seen for five, six years. I'm seeing them again. And North London is where I grew up all my life. This is where I was. Coming back to North London, it's amazing seeing the brothers grow. I left some brothers, they didn't have no hair, no beard, nothing. I've now come back and some of them have more hair than I am, taller than I am. It's an honor and it's a blessing to, to see you brothers again. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes this a continuous meeting and that we meet each other in good and we departure each other in good. The series that I've chosen to choose, I've chosen was an idea that came to me after I visited on a particular Monday. I gave a lecture in the masjid. When I left, I drove and on the way, on the high road, I didn't see the brothers that I would normally see when I left this masjid. When I came in, I didn't see a lot of people who I could recognize. So I realized a lot of the brothers have gone now. They've moved on. Some of them are married. Some of them have children. It's nice to make a circle for us to all benefit. The lands are different. Where I am is in West London. It's very far. To come here, I left at 5 o'clock. I got caught up on the A406. But every moment I was getting closer to the masjid, I was so happy. And any opportunity I got to come to a sunnah, I'm always, I'm always ready. The topic I have chosen, inshallah ta'ala, is lessons pertaining to the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he divided the stages that we are going to go through into three. The first one is Darul Dunya. And Darul Dunya is the place that we're at right now. It's this world. And the second one is Darul Barzakh, which is a stage between the dunya and the day of judgment. And the last one is Darul Qarar, the place where the person will stay forever. The first Dar, which is the Darul Dunya, what the focus point is, and the thing that you are judged based upon is the body and your limbs. If a person thinks of doing something evil, he wants to do it, but he doesn't do it. He won't be punished for it. Because what is accounted is what you do. Your limbs and your actions are what you are, you are judged for. We came into this dunya not with our permission. No one consulted you and asked you whether you want to come into this world or not. You were brought to this world. And every single action that you do, you will be held account for it the day of judgment. And every statement that you say, you will be held account for it the day of judgment. But when the person goes to the barzakh, which is the grave, here what 
counts is the person's ruh, the person's soul. The body here even may perish. As the Prophet ﷺ said that the person's body goes and nothing remains from it except the back part of the person. It's called Arabic Aj with Zanab. That's only what remains. I forgot the English term for it. Tailbone is, it comes from an evolution, evolution term. There's a better scientific term. That's, what's the word? The coccyx bone, that's the, way, that's the word. That's all that remains from the person. Everything else goes. The thing that's getting punished in the barzakh is your ruh. The body does feel it though. The pain goes to the body as well. Just like when you go to sleep and you have a very bad nightmare. The person wakes up sweating. Sometimes the person may even cry in their sleep. But what's going through the pain is the, is the ruh. But when the person comes to the third stage, which is the day of Darul Akhirah, Darul Qarar, the thing that is judged the person based on is their body and the soul together. So we've mentioned three. The dunya is your jasad, your body. The barzakh is what? Your ruh. And the day of Darul Qarar, it's what? It is the jasad and it's also the ruh. I'm not going to be focusing on Darul Dunya, this world, and the trials and the tribulation in which it has. I'm going to be speaking about the Darul Barzakh. That's what I'm going to be focusing on, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, Hatta ida ja'a ahadakumul mawt. Hatta ida ja'a ahadakumul mawt. Until one of them, if death, death comes to them, qala rabbir ji'oon. The person says, oh Allah, take me back to the earth. And this ayah is talking about the disbelievers. When death comes to one of the disbelievers, the thing that he says, he requests something from Allah. The disbeliever says to Allah, قَالَ رَبِّ رْجِعُونَ Oh Allah, take me back to the... Take me back to the dunya. This is a request that he has put forward to Allah. This is something he wants. قَالَ رَبِّ رْجِعُونَ the reason why I want to go back to the dunya is so I can do a righteous actions. I want every one of us here to ponder now and to think what is it that this person's request is? What is the request that they put forward? What is it that they are asking for? This is what I want. I just want to do a righteous actions. When I go back to the dunya, I don't want to go there because I want to have children, I want to make money. The only thing I want to go back in doing in this dunya is what? What is the thing that he's requesting for? Righteous deeds. And I've always said this brothers, the thing that matters is your righteous deeds. Everything else, everything else, is going to forsake you and everything else is going to walk away from you except what except your actions the prophet said to us alayhi salatu wasalam thalatha the dead person three things will go with him two will come back and one will remain your children and your money, all of them go back. Nothing. You lose your name. When they're washing your dead body, they no longer refer to you by your name. Your name is called the dead body. Have you washed the hand of the dead body? Have you washed the fingers of the dead body? Everything you owned has gone. Your wife, is a, there's a duration, a period of time. After that, she's thinking about getting married. She's going to move on in her life. The children are waiting to take the inheritance of their father. Life will carry on. 
the world will not stop for you. There's only one thing that has gone with you now. There's only one thing that has moved on from Darul Dunya to Darul Barzakh. It has moved with you from the Dunya and it's moved with you to the Barzakh. And it's also going to move with you to the hereafter. And what is it? It's the thing that the person is asking for here in this ayah. لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ Oh Allah, I just want to do a righteous actions. I want to do something good. And we're going to speak about righteous actions in more details. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us in this verse, what's the response to his request? He's put a request forward. He has asked if he can be brought back to the dunya so he can come with righteous actions. Allah says to us, in response to what he asked for, Kalla never. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. What he has said is mere words on his tongue. He's only regurgitating, he's only uttering words that have no reality to it. Innaha, meaning what he has asked for. If you ponder on the ayah, as you all know, grammar, in the Arabic language, there's a difference between a kalam and a kalima. A kalam in the Arabic language is a sentence, it's a jumla. And a kalima is the mufrad of a kalam. Ibn Malik he says, Kalamuna lafdun mufidun kastakim, wasmun wa fi'lun thumma harfun il kalim, wa hiduhu kalimatun wal kaulu am, wa kilmatun biha kalamu kadu am. Kalima is a word. Are you with me, brothers? Pay attention to the ayah here. What did this man say? He said, Qala Rabbir Jiuni Laali Amalu Salihan Fima Taraktu. Is this a kalima or is it a kalam? Kalam. Allah referred to it as a what? Just a kalima. This is to show that it is nothing. It's like you just said a word. When he's actually said a whole sentence. Innaha kalimatun huwa qailuha. He is the only one who is saying this. No one's going to take him back to this dunya. And no one's going to give him a second chance. He is crying over spilt milk. Have you heard that phrase before? In other words, nothing's going to be redone for him. Now we have to think, brothers. Now we have to ask ourselves a sincere and honest question. We have that opportunity today. The poet, he said, يُمَثِّلُ ذُو اللُّبِّ فِي لُبِّهِ مَصَائِبَ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْزِلَ فَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بَغْتَةً لَمْ تَرُعْهُ لِمَا كَانَ فِي نَفْسِهِ مَثَّلَا وَذُو الْجَهْلِ يَا مَنْ أَيَّامَهُ وَيَنْسَى مَسَارِعَ مَنْ قَدْ خَلَا فَإِنْ دَهِمَتْهُ صُرُوفُ الزَّمَانِ بِبَعْضِ مَصَائِبِهِ أَعُلَا The Salaf, such as Hassan al-Basri, Ibn al-Qayyim brings in his kitab, Iratatul Lahfan fi Masaid al-Shaytan, he brings it also in his kitab, Madarij al-Salikin, and Imam al-Qurtubi brings in his tadkira, and Safarini, rahimahullah, and others, they bring the story. Hassan al-Basri, he dug a grave in his own house, in his own room, and he went inside it. He, li- he lied inside his, the grave that he made. And he said, قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِي لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتُ Oh Allah, take me back to this earth so I can come with righteous actions. And then what he did was, he spoke to himself and he said to himself, you have now been given an opportunity. Stand up, work hard and multiply your efforts. That's why the poet, he said, يُمَثِّلُ ذُو اللُّبِّهِ he, What he does is, he places an example of himself before the problem comes, before that day comes, he, he rehearses it, he does it in advance. And so if it comes to him and the real day hits, he's ready for death. It doesn't shock him. It doesn't move him in any way or form or shape. Then Allah says, كَلَّا إِنَّهَا كَلِمَةٌ هُوَ قَائِلُهَا وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And in front of them, the word wara, Jazakallah khairan, the word wara in the Arabic language, what does it mean? 
Does it mean behind? Does the word wara in the Arabic language, does it mean behind? Huh? وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ السَّفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا Was the king behind them or was he in front of them? If he's behind them, so why is he making a hole inside the boat for? If they've passed the king and they've left him behind, why is he making a hole inside the boat for? In the Arabic language, there are words that in the Quran it's called At-Tadad. What does it mean, At-Tadad? It carries the two opposite meanings in that one word. The word Wara means Amam and it also means Khalf. Just, the, just like the word Qur ama Qar, however you want to say it. It means al haytu al haydu wa tuh. It can carry both of those meanings. So here what it means is Wakana Wara'ahum. In front of them was Barzakh. In front of them is a Barzakh. What does Barzakh mean? Abdul Rahman ibn Zayd is a great Mufassir. He said that Barzakh is Ma Bain al Mawti wal Ba'ath. It's what's between death and the resurrection. That's what Barzakh is. And the lesson that we're going to be taking today is pertaining to the Barzakh. And lessons pertaining to it. Bahak ibn Muzahim and he said, Al Barzakh ma bayna al dunya wal akhirah. Now, what I said before was this statement, Qala Rabbi Rji'uni, oh Allah, take me back to the dunya so I can come with righteous actions. Is this specific to the disbelievers? We, I said that the ayah was, it's talking about the disbelievers. But is it specific to them? Or is it more generic? It is also involves the believers. It also involves the believers. What's the delil for that? The delil for that is, Qawluhu Ta'ala, the statement of Allah, وَأَنْفِقُوا Give in the cause of your Lord, مِمَّا رَزَقْنَا That which we have provided you with. مِنْ قَبْلُ before, أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Before one of you, death strikes you. فَيَقُولَ And then he says, رَبِّ my Lord, لَوْلَا أَخَّرْتَنِي If only you delay for me, إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ To a designated time which is close. فَأَصَّدَّقَ So I can give him charity. وَأَكُنْ And so I can be from مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Those who those who are pious. So it's the same thing. This ayah is talking about believers. That they would say, فَيَقُولَ They will say, My Lord, Rabbi, my Lord, akhir delay for me. What is it that he wants to be delayed for? What does he want? What does he want again? He mentions it in this ayah, فَأَصَّدَّقَ I want to give charity. Ibn al-Qayyim said that for us sadaqa, the ayah is talking about sadaqa specifically because this person didn't pay zakat. But if a person didn't pray the salah, he's going to say, so I can pray. Everybody's going to be talking about what they didn't do. For us sadaqa, so I can give the zakat that is obligatory on me. وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And I can be from those who are pious. That day you're going to regret not being from the pious people. Now you ask yourself a sincere question, brothers. Why would you want to cry that day when you can prevent it today? And can a person become pious if the people he's around are not pious? Are you able to become pious if the friend that's on your right and the friend that's on your left is not righteous? Where would righteousness come to you from? Where would piety come to you from? The thing that harms many brothers, if you look at them, and many sisters, is the people they affiliate themselves with, and the people that they hang around with. And the friend, as it said, a sahib sahib. Your friend will drag you down. Your friend would either be the reason for you to go to paradise, or your friend could be a reason for you to be in a state of destruction. The person, يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ 
مع الرسول سبيلا يا ويلتا ليتني لم أتخذ فلانا خليلا لقد أضلني عن الذكر This is the thing he did me ما معنى لقد أضلني عن الذكر بعد إذ جاءني وكان الشيطان للإنسان خذولا Meaning he prevented me from being pious Whenever I wanted to pray Whenever I wanted to remember Allah He was an obstacle in front of me I wasn't able to be good Be sincere and honest If your friend Today in this world If he can't help you Imagine a hypothetical scenario You got caught red-handed try to, Trying to steal something from a bank or something Or Tesco's Let's, let's keep it simple, okay Tesco's would your friend in any way, form or shape, would he take that sentence for you if the police caught you both? Would he? He would leave you. And rather, it's as bad as this. He would say, don't be a snitch. صح? Don't be a snitch. You got caught, take it all yourself. And you see some people in prison, that because the reason why they're in prison is what? Because they just don't want to snitch. <laughs> he's in prison because he doesn't want to snitch. He's taken five, six years for it. Sah? My question here is, if your friend couldn't help you now, what makes you think he's going to help you the day of judgment? And what is, how is he going to help you? So you need to think, brothers. You need to ask yourself these sincere questions. Are you wishing to meet Allah the day of judgment? If you are, then perfect your actions. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ The one who is hoping the meeting of his Lord فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Ya ikhwah, do righteous actions. Come with righteous deeds. Work hard. Our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam who was promised paradise alive whilst he was in this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him paradise. And not only did he He's the best who Allah created subhanahu wa ta'ala from the children of Adam. He is also forgiven for his past sins and his upcoming sins. Ma'adhalika, his legs would swell and he would be standing at night and praying. What is he doing? Righteous actions. None of us here have been promised paradise alive. Has anyone been promised Jannah? You don't know where you're going to be and you don't know where you're going to end. You don't know where your final abode is going to be. When I was coming on my way right now, I called my mom. And as I was speaking to my mom, she said to me, your face is glowing and my face has become old. My mom said this to me. I said to your mom, in four months from now, I'm going to turn 30. And then we started to talk about when I first started my teenage. I was first 13. And then I finished. And then I started in the 20s. And then now 30. And starting to hit 30. And then it's no matter of time that you see yourself very old. Those who celebrate their birthdays, who say that they celebrate their birthday, they're celebrating a period of time where they're getting closer to their grave. That's how much shaitan has duped them. You as an individual, every single moment you live, you're getting closer to your grave. And you're getting closer to the day you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that you have prepared and what is it that you have put forward? These are questions I really want you brothers to ask yourselves and to think. What is it that I have put forward and what is it that I have worked with? What is it that matters that I said righteous deeds? The effort that you put in. Sulaiman, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to hear the speech of the, uh, the ants and the speech and the talking of the ants, Sulaiman, he smiled. Allah said in the Qur'ayah, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِنْ قَوْلِهَا Sulaiman, he smiled. And the tabassum is two types. There's a tabassum which is tabassum al dahik when you smile and you're laughing. And there's a tabassum al ghadab when you smile but you're angry. Yeah? In the hadith of the ifki, the story of the ifk, 
when Aisha was falsely accused of what she was accused of, the Prophet smiled. What did the narration say? The Prophet smiled a smile of anger. Huh? This is the smiling of happiness. But what is it that Sulaiman said? He said, قَالَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا the dua that he made is, Oh Allah, give me the ability and empower me with the ability to come with righteous actions. Because the person, brothers, the reason Allah brought you to this world is to come with righteous actions. Allah created you and brought you to this world to see from amongst us who's going to come with righteous actions and good deeds. Your day goes by, another day comes, and another day passes by, and you haven't in any way, form, or shape come with any righteous deeds. Rather, you've accumulated sins and shortcomings. Allah says in another ayah, وَلِكُلِّ دَرَجَاتٍ all of them, they have levels and ranks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. But based on what? Mimma amilu. All of it is based upon what? Actions that they have put forward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take for them. Uh, Allah is going to take for them their righteous deeds. And they won't be oppressed. Righteous deeds. Good actions. You know who is the case, the smart person, the clever person? It's not the person who makes money. You know, we look at a person who's, mashallah, he's a business minded person. Every little opportunity he'll, he'll make money. The smart person is every opportunity he finds a way he can get a righteous deed from it. Even if he's unable to get a righteous deed in a particular scenario, what does he do? He smiles in the face of his Muslim brother. He knows that even can be a reason for him to get reward. Every minute, helping a Muslim person. Every opportunity he gets, he wants to get righteous deeds from it. Allah says in the Quran, Man kana yuridul Anyone who's looking for honor, For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is izzah. For him alone is for him izzah. Jami'an, all of it. Ilayhi to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yas'adu. It ascends high up to him alone. Al Kalimu Tayyib. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Kalimu Tayyib means Dikrullahi, the remembrance of Allah. Wal Amalu Salih. And the righteous deeds, Yarfa'u. It's also raised to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Abbas, what did he say? Is meant by Al Amalu Salih. He said, Ada'u Fara'idillah. Coming with the obligatory things on you. There were three men. They were walking one day and as they were walking they went into a cave and the cave locked on them they went when they got locked into the cave they spoke to themselves and they said the following, nothing today is going to help us and is going to take us out of the trap that we're in, except what? Our righteous deeds. That's the only thing that's going to save us today. The first one says, Allahumma inna kana li abawani shaykhani kabiran. Oh Allah, I had two elderly parents and wa kuntu la aghbidu qablahuma ahlan wa la mala. I never used to provide and I never used to give anyone before them. In other words, he used to give his mother and his father and whatever was left over, he would give to his children and his wife. So one day he said, I, come, I came to the house and I found my mother and father, both of them sleeping. Because the parents, when they reach an old age, they're used to, be, they're used to a routine. If you're slightly late from that particular routine, they go to sleep and they get tired. So the parents went to sleep. But he was an obedient child. What did he do? He stood 
next to his parents holding the cup for both of them the milk because that's what he used to give them every night he, he would bring the shepherds back he would pour the milk in there for them and he would give it to them but he came late but he didn't go to sleep he stood right next to his mother and his father's head and he waited for them to both wake up and he held the cup in his hand and he said Allahumma in kuntu fa'altu dhalika bitigha'a wajhik oh Allah if I did this for your sake ففرج عنا ما نحن فيه. Take us out of this calamity that has befallen us. This place that we're locked in. Take us out of it. ففرج الله الله تبارك وتعالى. He moved the rock for them slightly. سبحانه وتعالى. And but they couldn't get out of it. His parents woke up. They got the cup of milk. They drank it, and they were happy. What did he say in the narration? Whilst he's standing next to his mother and his father's head, and he's holding the milk. His children, his children are holding onto his legs. Dad, we want the milk because they used to drink what. But the procedure and the schedule is that mom and dad get fed first, and whatever is left over is what you guys get. These are his own children. He has chosen to, to be obedient to his parents. Righteous deeds, righteous deeds. That's what saved him that day when he got locked into the cave, and the second one, and the third one, each and every one of them. The story was what? When they got locked in, what did they say to each other? The only thing that's going to save us is our righteous deeds. The disbelievers, the thing that's going to be done to them is that their righteous deeds are going to be nullified. As Allah said in the Quran, وَقَدِبْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْ ثُورًا The disbeliever, his righteous deeds are all going to be nullified and nothing's going to remain from it. As for the believers, The disbeliever, his righteous deeds are all nullified and the believer's one is what? It's not nullified. But the Prophet told us in the hadith of Thawban, Tabarani narrated in his Mu'jam, Tirmidhi narrated in his Sunan, that the Prophet Sallallahu told us a group of people who are going to lose their righteous actions inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and they are not disbelievers, they are Muslims the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لَأَعْلَمَنَّ أَقْوَامٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي يَأْتُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ I know a group of people from my ummah that are going to come the day of judgment they have righteous deeds as big as the mountain of Tahama فَيَجْعَلُهَ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ will make all of his righteous deeds Nothing, null and void. So the Sahabas, they said, Ya Rasulullah, are these people not Muslims? Do they not believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment? Are they not Muslims? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, No, of course they are Muslims. Yusalluna, they pray, kama tusalluna, the way you guys pray. Wa yasumuna, kama tasumuna. They fast the way that you guys fast. Walahum, and they also have a portion at night. Meaning at night time, وَلَهُمُ الْحَظُّ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ Means that at night time they pray. قِيَامُ Layl. So why are these Muslims going to lose their righteous deeds? وَلَكِنَّهُمْ إِذَا خَلَوْا بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ انْتَهَكُوهَا But when they are by themselves and no one can see them and they're in the dark room alone, they do all the sins that come to their head. And everything that they want to do, their laptop, their phone, they chat to whoever, whichever woman they want to chat with, they say whatever they want to, they speak the way that they want to speak, they watch whatever videos they want to watch, they act in the whatever way that they want to act. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ But they, these individuals, if they are, they are alone, they don't remember Allah. And it's sad that you have made Allah أَهْوَنُ النَّاظِرِينَ إِلَيْكِ you have made Allah the lowest of those who look at you. Because you know yourself, you would never dare to do that in front of a respected person in your community. You wouldn't do that in front of your parents. But Allah has no value in your eyes. Whatever sins that comes to your mind, you want to do it in front of Him. You're not shy. You're not embarrassed. That Allah is looking at me. How am I going to do this? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu it was said that كَانَ لَا يَغْتَسِلُ قَائِمَا He never used to do غُصُّ القائم. He never used to stand Abu Bakr. Why? حَيَاءً مِنَ اللَّهِ Because he was shy of Allah. Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه So when you think of a sin and you do it un, 
not knowing the consequences or not thinking about it then this will eat into your righteous deeds and as I said to you brothers the barzakh what matters is what righteous deed is what matters many brothers and sisters call me and I know some of you guys have probably come in contact with people like that people who tell you they're living a very hard life Sahih. sometimes even Muslims I get emails sometimes sent by Muslims who say I'm very suicidal he's a Muslim his name is Muhammad Ahmed Khalid Zaid Amr Muslim he's suicidal he doesn't want to live and I'm guessing many of you guys come across people like that people who slit their arms just so they can get rid of pain common صح? problems like that what is it that can remove all of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. Any man or woman who comes with righteous deeds, who does good action, will live a good life. Whether it be a man or a woman, good actions gives you a good life, and you will live a good life. But if you come with crimes, the crime will eat into your body. If you don't drink water, what happens to you? You dehydrate. And in the long run, what's going to happen to you? You're going to deteriorate and you're going to be sick and you're going to be ill and you're probably going to die from it, right? True or false? Okay. The same applies with whether a person does not nurture his, his heart with what it requires. The religion is what the heart wants. And if you don't nurture your heart with it, your heart will be suicidal. It wouldn't want to live. Does that make sense? It's the supplement of the heart. Righteous deeds. This series that I've started, the aim is not to go too technical. And the aim is not also to make it too long. The objective from it is, the best of speech is maqalla. Wadalla. The best of speech is, that which is little, but it, it shows the path and it also indicates what's needed. Anything which I have said that was wrong, shortcoming, faults, errors, it's for me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.